right? Shabak Shadawam, Yasharala. My name's Deacon Iba from Gather Another Elect Church. Brother Elder, a.k.a. Gabar. So we just want to um, come with you this, this afternoon, giving glory and honor to the Most High Higher and His precious Son's name, Yeshia. That's right. We're going to open up in the Lord's Prayer. Face the east, bow your hands. Ahaya <clears throat> by Hashem Yeshia. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So be it. So be it. All right, Yasharala, we have a, a different um, lesson this um, afternoon on the Shabbat. And um, we're going to share our test personal testimony with you this um, afternoon on the Shabbat. And um, the reason why I'll be going into uh, this lesson titled My Testimony is because it's to um, encourage our brothers and sisters in the faith and the truth, you know, the remnant, to encourage you, to let you know we're flesh and blood just because you see us coming on YouTube that we don't deal with issues or have trials and tribulations. It's not so. We're, At all. We're, we're just like our brother, like Christ said. He wouldn't be like our brother. For, so, um, this testimony is to encourage you and um, to bless you, okay? And I'm just going to start off with my testimony, and we're going to go over a few scriptures before we um, get into my um, personal testimony, all right? So, we're going to go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to get verses 12 through 13. 11, 12, oh, like, 11, uh, 11. 12, 13. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And edify one another, even as also ye do. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their works, for their work's sakes, and be, and be at peace among yourselves. She like it real quick. Oh, it, it, it disappeared. Yeah, go back at the top. Wow. So, where did it go? It should be right there. There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. So, if you look at, um, basically these scriptures is, is from um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 13, I mean 11 to 13, is speaking of um, encouraging one another. And then also in verse 12, uh, Paul was saying, I beseech you, brethren, to labor, who, who's, we should get to know each other at, as you labor among each other, okay? And that, let's get it, verse 12. And, verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. So we want you to get to know us, Israel, as, as um, leaders in the community. And um, it's about knowing each other. So that's why I'm sharing our testimony with you. Go ahead. And are over you in the Lord. Meaning those who um, teach the, um, the the sheep, you know, as Lord place order inside the kingdom. Go ahead. And admonish you. Meaning those, we cherish you, you know, as far as we, we um, look over your soul, okay? And it's, it's an honor, okay? Go ahead with 13. Verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love mm -hmm. for their work sakes. Okay, meaning um, as we labor among each other, it's good for you to also... See us highly, but love us. And encourage. Yeah, encourage. Encourage each other. In right. love. In love. For their work's sake. Mm -hmm. Not because they got titles. Right. So with the work that they put in, bringing this truth to you. Mm -hmm. And be at peace among yourselves. Right. So this is by us opening up to you, let you see what Christ has brought us through. You'll um, be able to see, man, they're just like me. You know, they struggle just as well as I do. So this is what this lesson is about. So we can know each other. And um, as we labor among each other. And also to be at peace among yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have, have animosity towards your brother or right. sister, regardless of what name they're calling on or mm -hmm. what colors they wear. Because we all was calling to this truth on the one person that was mm -hmm. Christ. Okay? So that's why I said, and be at peace among yourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what we must always remember. Not because you're from this camp or you this church or so on and so forth. But go ahead. All right. So let's go into uh, Revelation chapter 12. We're going to get verse 11. 
So my brothers and sisters, just sit back and enjoy this lesson and, and let God minister to your spirit. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11 reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Speaking of Christ, this is how Israel is overcoming the enemy and all those the workers of iniquity and Satan by the blood, which is Christ, because Yeshua died for Israel. Okay, so that's how we overcome our enemy. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. See, by the word of our testimony, meaning what, what did Christ bring you through? How did Christ deliver you and save you from the pits of hell? Okay, go ahead. And they love not their lives unto the death. Meaning, even though death came they way, their way, when that time comes, they didn't panic. They didn't go into panic mode. They surrendered themselves and died for Christ. We all got a test. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got a testimony. And you got a test. And you're going to have a testimony. Yeah. That's why he said you were supposed to encourage each other. Tell your brothers and sisters what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Because what, how the devil play the game is that you think you're the only one going through something. Right. You know, just because a person calls himself an elder, a deacon, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You're going through something. The Bible said there's nothing new up on the sand. And we all got a testimony. Right. So we want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to mm -hmm. share your testimony. Right. You know what I'm saying? With your brothers and sisters, because you might uplift a person. Say, man, they yeah. went through it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They overcame it by the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony. Right. Showing there's nothing new up under the sun. Nothing new. You know, so this is a, a, um, a, uh, an opportunity and an honor to go before you as I share my testimony. Um, yes, sir. So I'm um, Iba, you know, that's my um, Hebrew name. And um, it started, I would say, we all, as the scripture says, um, we're going to be worshiping wood and stone. So we all have our bondages that we came into our captivity or into the world. I came under Christianity. Okay, that was my bondage, you know. Are my wood, as the scripture says, you know, which is the cross, you know, the wooden cross, you know. So I was a Christian for 37 years, which was my bondage. But however, um, Christ was still um, speaking to me, you know, even though I was in, in my um, captivity. But at the age of five, um, Christ spoke to me and um, started dealing with me then. I started hearing God's voice, you know. So I knew I had a calling on my life, but I rebelled from it. You know, I went through... Um, the Catholic Church, um, different denominations in Christianity, Methodist, Baptist, non-denominational, um, non charismatic, you, you know, just different types of bondage that I was in under Christianity. And um, what happened, I would say, 20, about 20 years ago, I had an um, a incident where I knew I was in rebellion and got you know, speaking to me to change my life, but I want to do me. So one day after college, um, I came home to see a friend, you know, or one of my homeboys. So I rode over to his house, you know, doing my thing. But um, he stayed in Watts, you know. So I'm from Los Angeles, California, by the way. You know, I grew up in South Central LA. So I'm familiar with gangs and God still kept me. Um, so I went over there to see him that summer. And um, during that time, um, I wanted to surprise him because uh, my people's got a brand new ride and I wanted to show off in it. So I went over there to go see him in that brand new ride and I got lost trying to find him. And so I drove around the block and I didn't know they was having some gang activities, you know. They was banging against each other, the Crips and the Bloods. So I went over there and um, I noticed some, uh, some tail lights was following me, but I really didn't. No headlights, you mean? Yeah, headlights, you know. And so I was driving. Um, I seen him following me. I said, so let me make a right. And I made a right. I said, well, let me make a left. And they were still behind me as I made a left and a right. And then I was thinking, man, well, somehow I, I found my friend's house when all this was happening. So I pulled over to the, to the side to let them go by. And then the car pulled up on me. And I was like, oh, man, what's, what's going on? It's about to be a jack. You know, and so they pulled up on me and um, the dude that was in the back seat stuck out a gun and he was like, what's up, cuz like that. And I was just panicked. You know, I got scared. So I started moving my mouth and no, no words, no words came out. And so he already shot. He was like maybe mm, two feet from me, two to three feet. And he already shot around and I was looking into the gun. 
And all I seen was smoke. It's like everything went in slow motion. Mm-hmm. You know, all I seen was smoke in the barrel. You know, it was like in 3D, you know. And as he shot, nothing hit me. Then that's when I rolled over, you know. And as I rolled over, I'm still stuck in my safety belt. And then I just ha- I heard like multiple shots go off. Pop, 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 start hitting my car, you know. And I didn't know what, the, n- nothing came out. Because remember, I was scared. So nothing came out, and then all I said was, Jesus, you know, and that was the only thing that came out of me. And so when I, I, I said Jesus, then I did feel like a shield come over me, you know, when I was laying down, you know, and no nothing hit me, and then I rolled back up, and um they was gone. And then when I rolled back up, another car pulled up, and they started shooting at me. And then that's when I was, I just rolled over and somehow I hit the lever and it went into reverse and I went back. And then, and then I was going back. I popped up on a, a tree, at the curb, and I just, I, I hit the accelerator fast as I could, as hard as I could. And I just got stuck and my woods were spinning, smoke was coming out and they were still shooting on me, you know. Um, mm. Bullets went through the safety belt, through the car, through the seats. Not one bullet hit me. And then I'm stuck like this and I'm laying like this in the, in the car, you know, and they was in front of me because remember, I went back in reverse. So they was in front of me and the dude got out the car and he ran towards me and started shooting, pop, 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 started running till he ran out of bullets, you know, and then I'm laying back. I'm like, this is it. It's like the bullets just dropped and hit the windshield and I'm stuck in the safety boat. No, not one bullet hit me. All praises. You know, and that's just nothing nothing but the, the hand of God that just had me, you know. And then they got in their cars. The dude ran out of bullets. He got back, ran in his car, and they thought I was dead, dead, because I was slouched over, and smoke was going up in the air from me burning rubber. And um, I got out the car, and I ran, and it was glass all over. I stepped all on glass because I was barefooted. All that because I, I was in the chill mode. I just had on a sweatshirt, some flip-flops. And it's some shorts. So when I rolled out the car, I stepped all in glass. I didn't even get cut. And I ran up under my boy's house in his back car. Now, he wasn't even here. You know, because like I said, I just popped up to surprise him. So that was just crazy. But anyways, as I ran up and slid up under the car, as I got down, I said, "Um, Lord, I said, if they come back to get me, I said, I'm ready, you know, forgive me from all my sins and, you know, take me. I'm ready. They come back to kill me or finish me off. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me right then and there and said, hold up. What if one of them bullets would have hit you? Mm. You never would have had time to repent. Mm. I started crying right up under the car right there, you know. But like I said earlier, God, I knew I had a calling on my life. I knew I was called to preach this word. I didn't know I was an Israelite check. But like I said, God did with you in phases and in seasons. That's right. You know, so he was preparing me. But had I listened at first and took heed to his call, I would have grew uh, faster then or sooner came into the truth. Thank the most High for grace. Yeah, right. You know, and so what ended up happening, his daddy came out, you know, and he was like, you know, what's his name is not here. And I'm like, what? He said, you all right? Because look, when all that shooting was going on, nobody came out their houses. You wouldn't have came out either. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have yeah, came out right, either. Right, right, you right. And so the dude, I, everybody started coming out. Then he came up to me, said, you all right? You know? And so then they called the, the cops and everything. And I forgot my phone number. I'm trying to call my house, you know, because I'm in panic mode. And I'm scared. I just got shot at. My life could have lost my life, you know? And the cops came. And they, they send in the gang unit, you know. So the gang unit came in, in and the the dude came up and said, um, what, where you from? You know, I was like, huh? You know, I said, look, man, I'm on college. It was a, you know, it was a so-called um, African-American, you know. And so the cop was like, so wh- where you from? I said, I don't, I don't gang bang. He said, what? There ain't nobody just going to come at you and shoot you like this. You got to be from somewhere. I said, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm straight from college. I'm on break. So he said, all right. He said, let me check you because... Um, you could be hit. You don't even know because you were shot. So he went to pat me down, checking me. And then he ran my, he asked me my name and ran my number through the system, did all that. And then a corner car pulled up or the wagon pulled up because, you know, I guess they heard the call. 
So they just assume I'm automatically dead. Somebody, somebody dead. Yeah, after all them shots, they it, they they went through the whole alphabet, you know, from dropping the gun shells to check the bullets A through Z, you know. And so it was over thirty something rounds that was shot at me. It was um, a forty four, a twenty two, nines, you know. I actually took one bullet to, just to remind me that you know this is what God delivered me from that I took out of my car as a forty four. I keep that with me, you know, just to remind me of God's grace and mercy, you know. And so, um, to, to speed it up, what ended up happening was um, another cop came to me. It was an Asian cop, and he looked around, seen everything. It was bullet holes in people's houses, um, all up and down the street. And he said, look, man, you need to be in church the, this Sunday. It, it happened to me on a Thursday, you know. And I was like, man, that's God speak. God spoke to that Asian dude, mm -hmm. you know, saying you need to be in church this Sunday, you know. And so my family came and everything, and we went home, and we prayed, you know. Keep in mind, I was in a Christian faith at the time, you know. So we did, we did believe in prayer, and we prayed and everything. And I went to bed that night, and then I, I woke up in the morning, and as I was waking up, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go pick up the Bible. I'm like, huh? I said, yeah, I better go pick up the Bible. Of course, after, <laughs> after a tragedy like yeah. that. <laughs> and so when I went to the Bible. At least you listened. Right. And that's the key, and I'm gonna um, break that down. And I went, I went to the Bible, and I went to the scripture, and the Holy Spirit said, "Just open up the Bible." I'm like, "What?" I said, "Okay." So I opened up the Bible, and as soon as I opened up the Bible, this was confirmation that God was calling me all this time, and, and He brought me to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. Did you get that, Elder? Sure. You and, say the book of Mark, what? Um, chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. So this was confirmation. All that I went through, God was speaking to me to get me on point, to get me in my, into my destiny. Mark chapter 15 and 18? 16, verses 15. Okay, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 reads, And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Go ye into all the world mm -hmm. and preach the gospel to every creature. So this is what God was telling me all this time. He was saying, I called you. This was confirmation. I started crying, man. I started bawling, you know. Go ahead. Verse 16. He that believeth mm -hmm. and is baptized mm -hmm. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. So basically Christ was encouraging me, go ahead and preach his word. Who don't believe it, don't worry about it. They're going to be damned. So you go ahead and do what I called you to do. Go ahead. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that mm -hmm. believe. Right. In my name shall they cast out devils. That's meaning those who are um, demonically oppressed. You know, Christ has given us the authority, the anointing, to lay hands on them to deliver them from their depression or bondage. Go ahead. They shall speak with new tongues. Okay, that's speaking of different languages. You know, you'll be able to speak different languages to, to minister to someone. You know, go ahead. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents, mm -hmm. and if they drink any deadly thing. Now, what they're speaking of is a spiritual. It's not talking about um, physically. You go there and pick up a python. Yeah, you are die. You're going to die. Rat was snaking. <laughs> this is speaking of spiritually. You'll be able to deal in the spiritual realm through prayer and break the bondage of Satan on your family and your friends. Go ahead. Verse 18. And they shall take up serpents, mm -hmm. and if they drink any deadly thing, mm -hmm. it shall not hurt them. What that meaning is, if you're going out and you're preaching the word, or you know, you're just going about your daily business, and you're walking the truth, but a witch or a warlock might try to poison you or something, God got you. That's right. You won't be able to die. You drink that drink, and they put some poison in it. Or even this government that's trying to kill you through the... the um, GMO. Floor, yeah, fluoride and stuff like that. God's going to protect you through that. Go ahead. And they shall lay hands on the sick, mm -hmm. and they shall recover. All right. That's speaking of any illnesses or things like that. You might have to go on the fast, and you'll be able to lay hands on your, your family or your friends to deliver them from their sickness. Praying for them. Right. You know. So this was just confirmation that God was calling me all this time, you know, and... That I repented, got right with the Most High. Even though I still was still in Christianity, it wasn't, I guess, that season for me to come into the knowing that I'm a Hebrew. You took in baby steps, right? Baby steps, you know. And so after that, um, and this this happened in I would say, like I said, '97, and then this took. I came into the truth in 2012 or 13, around that time. I came into the truth, and I was wrongfully terminated. Um, from a number one retailer at the time, you know, but I was still preaching his word, you know, and God wanted me to do some things and he took me through that 
But he also wanted me to be still. So sometimes God would take you and, and, and put you down. Be still and know that I am God, you know. And so he placed me into where I was still. Some people got to go to jail to mm -hmm. be still. Uh, my, my situation was I had to get wrongfully terminated. And he set me down so I can hear his voice again. That's right. You know, and so I was laying in the bed. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get up and read the word. I want you to read um, the book of Matthew um, chapter one and go through the genealogy. I'm like, what? So this is how I came into the truth. So I said, yeah, let me go ahead and get this. And so I went, went into um, Matthew chapter one. It speaks of Yeshia genealogy. And for those who know what Yeshia means, that means Jesus in ancient Hebrew, which means savior. Savior, the anointed savior. Right, Yeshia. My savior. Mm -hmm. And so as I opened up the book to Matthew chapter one, I read a genealogy and it's 42 generations. But God was dealing with me on to let me know this is your ge genealogy, your roots, that you're a Hebrew. So I said, I traced it and went all the way to Shem. And then the spirit was like, okay, now go to the computer, went to the computer, typed up Shem. And then that's when I found out that Shem was a so-called black man. And then that's when I started finding out that I'm a Hebrew. And it just went on from there. And then that's how I came into the truth, you know. And I'm saying all this because I want you to know that it's a process. God is going to deal with you to get you to where your destiny is that he has for you, you know, because God's putting his spirit on Israel, waking us up as it speaks of in um, Ezekiel chapter 37, the dry bones. He's waking us up, you know, and I pray that my testimony will help you and encourage you to let you know that I'm flesh and blood just like you, you know. So if God is speaking to you, repent, get right. Don't wait because um, tomorrow's not promised to no man. That's right. So, and, the, and the beautiful thing about this is, uh, I mean, I heard his testimony before when I first met the brother. Uh, the beautiful thing about it is, like, we all, and this goes to show the grace and the long suffering and the mercy that the mm -hmm. Most High and His precious Son, Yeshua, which the world called Jesus Christ, have upon us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you listen. Right. You know, you didn't do a Tupac. <laughs> you didn't do a Tupac where I got shot five times. You know mm. what I'm saying? And then you go back right to your vomit. Right. You're going back to your vomit. Mm -hmm. That brother, Grace Card ran out. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then when he gets shot, what, one or two times in Vegas, and he died. And yeah. we got many stories like that, even right. in your in your cities. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it's listening. Because what do the scripts say? My sheep hear my voice. God. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just don't be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. Right. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Because the Most mm -hmm. High give us all a chance. Right. He said he wished that no man should perish. Should perish. Mm -hmm. So all our homies, our loved ones, they had a chance right. to repent. Are we saying that they didn't repent? We don't know. That's can't, can't sit in the Most High seat. Right. But you listen, huh? Okay. And I'm glad you listen right. because as, he's, a, he's a decent brother. I ain't going to say a good brother because the only body's yeah, good is the Most High. The most high. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. a decent brother. And I pray that you endure to the end. And we right. iron sharpen iron and we encourage each other mm -hmm. to do so. Each one teach one, so right. to say. All praises. And, and you know, I just thank the most high. So he led me this way and led me to... Um, How you came across Gabar? Um, through through um, GOCC. Uh -huh. you know, um, Tell that testimony, y'all. And um, like I said, um, God um, woke me up and told me to go read the word. And I, I found out I'm Hebrew, so I started watching YouTube videos and I came against Elder Ricard at the time. And that's how I... Um, Found out about um, I can become a you know a, not become a Hebrew but grow. So I called um, gathering gathering of Christ Church and that's when I spoke to um, Elder Ricard at the time and he led me to uh, Deacon Balad and Balad um, gave me Elder Gabar's uh, phone number and that's when I called him and we um, started chopping it up over the phone, mm -hmm. introducing ourselves and I found out he stayed close to me in Los Angeles and that's how we reconnected. You know, 2014, I believe, you know, reconnected. And that's all she wrote. It's, it's all she wrote it started. after that. Huh? Yeah, you know. And Couldn't get rid of you after that. Huh? <laughs> it's a blessing. That's how God so, woke you up. So, so why you're not, just, I'm just to sort of play an uh, mm -hmm. uh, interview here, why you're not, I mean, we understand the process that the most high, you're growing in the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? You went from Pentecostal Baptist and getting shot up right. to... Uh, hanging out with uh, the, uh, a brother Rakar in the gathering of Christ Church. Mm -hmm. Why are you not with? Uh, not to go deep into, but why are you not up under that? 
uh, Rakah, I should say. Why are you right. not under that? Not, why are you sitting on the side of me mm-hmm. at the gathering of the elect? You right. know what I'm saying? Because that's a testimony within itself itself. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Just bring mm-hmm. it out to a head. Well, um, it was some things I didn't agree with, with the elder, you know, as far as um, personal issues. It had nothing to do with the doctrine, you know, of Christ, because he, he does um, what his church teaches the doctrine of Christ. The laws. Right, the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. It's just that we, I didn't, it was no accountability at the time, you know. And so elders wasn't standing up for truth. You know, as it speaks of in the book of James. So I didn't want to be a part of that. And I, as I stayed in the spirit during all that transition, maybe it was what, 2015? Around there. You know, that the church, you know, we we went our separate ways, but we all did in peace, you know. And I didn't agree with some of the things the elder was, was teaching as far as um, no accountability. Because the scriptures speak of accountability. You know, if you have a fault with your elder, present it to the elder and all that went forward, but nothing changed on his part. So we decided to go our separate ways, you know. And as I see in the spirit, God already provided a shepherd, which is um, Elder Gabar. And it says, I will provide for you a shepherd after my own heart. You oh, know? praises. And I seen that in the spirit and God let me uh, to stay with Elder, you know. So let me ask you, brother. I mean, because uh, uh, you have any animosity against the brother because you disagree no. with him? No. What you learn from that? What, what I learned from that is that you have to know God for yourself. You know, and I've seen a lot of brothers that do want to follow a man, women, and our brothers and sisters, they desire to follow the man and the truth could be right in front of them. And I decided to stay on the word, you know, walking in the spirit, right, right, staying in the spirit. And I decided, no, nah, something is not right over here, you know, and uh, we tried to fix it. We tried to come together, but it was nothing that could be fixed because I'm not going to stay up under an elder that's in sin. You know, let me ask you this, then, brother, how you feel today? Today, not not talking about where you where you came well yeah yeah where you came from and where you mm-hmm. at now, what, what how you feel today in your walk well, mm-hmm. in your relationship with Yeshua the world called Jesus of Christ right. how you feel in your own personal walk because the Bible tells us search out your own salvation right you know a lot of people forget about that how do you mm-hmm. feel as a a child of the Most High higher you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. how do you feel in your walk in so called 2017. Right. I mean, since since that, that fallout, you know, and we left on, on in peace. No, not necessarily on that fallout. I'm saying from the mm-hmm. time you came from the uh, Baptist church. Oh, okay. To your, your, uh, the drive-by shooting on right. you. And the trials and tribulations mm-hmm. that you encounter in your life. Right. Okay, up to this day, this Shabbat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. The seventh day. How do you feel oh, in man. your walk? Or you feel that... You're getting closer to the Most High, mm-hmm. or you feel that there's a gray area that mm-hmm. you need to uh, fulfill. Right. Um, to answer that, like like Paul said, we all have a thorn in the flesh that that we deal with. Okay. You know, I'm not perfect. You know, I struggle in in areas. You know. However, um, I'm growing since that incident to now i'm going from glory to glory that's right hell, you know so it's a blessing i feel excited i am excited and i'm learning every day i can hear god his spirit on me every day every second mm-hmm. you know and he's guiding me and directing me i feel his anointing because keep in mind when i was rebelling he still had his hand on me i was still able to hear his voice you know so imagine now I'm so you so you slipped yeah. up you yeah i mean you 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 slipped up back after the, the drive-by shooting and then oh yeah oh yeah, I, yeah it was yeah. times that's another time <laughs> oh you want me okay i mean you, yeah, we yeah, all do all right. but just let the people know because right. they think that this walk is a easy uh-huh. walk nah nah i i end up even though i went through that ordeal um maybe two three years later i went back to my vomit again mm-hmm. you know and my bondage wasn't just Christianity, it was also whoremonging. Mm-hmm. You know, I slept with a lot of females back then. That's right. You know, and that sin revisited me again. You know, that bondage revisited me again, and I end up slipping and fell again. And so during that ordeal, and I was, and this is true, like I said, everything is true. I'm laying in the bed with this, this sister, and um, as I was, you know, done, whatever, um, she turned over, she was asleep. And a demon spoke out of her. And I forgot. Oh, this is so many years ago. But um, she said that that demon spoke to her as she was asleep and said, you're oh, you're just a whore. And I looked over to her and I, she was knocked out. Mm. 
And I said, oh my, I jumped up out of the bed, put my clothes on, put my pants on, I didn't even say bye to her. And I smashed out. Well, it's like the script say. <laughs> it's like the script say, you know, um, you become as one. Yeah. You become felt, as one. Yeah, I yeah, felt you the spirits locked, yeah. locked into me. I felt that. After we ended up having intercourse, her demons went into me. Exactly. And she was knocked out. She said, you're such a whore. I'm like, oh my. I smashed out. And I knew that was like, man, God, forgive me. And I believe after that, I had a dream. And God spoke to me mm -hmm. in the dream and said, um, I was in the mall. And I'm, I'm almost down. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. And, go ahead. Take it down. It's your interview. <laughs> right, right. It's your interview. I mean, your testimony. And and I was in the mall and God was um, reminding me, hey, I'm going to make sure you know that it was me. That kept you alive. Not because you was quick and fast. And you and, smart. Yeah. Right. You was able to dodge bullets. I was in the mall and I was going up an escalator inside the mall. And a group of dudes came into the mall with guns and killed me in the mall. This is a dream. Yeah, this is in a dream. And broad daylight. Killed me in the mall. And guess what? All the cops were there. Like five feet next to me and didn't do nothing. In other words, death. Uh, once the most I send a death you key, I tell you, even though you know you have protection as far as the police, right. nothing can can protect you from that death decree. From the death decree. And God, I woke up and I was like, I got it. I I, I repented and I went straight forward, you know. And um, I didn't go back into my vomit. I I, I still struggle with the flesh, but I didn't go back into my vomit as far as you know being a, a whore monger again, you know. And um, so I'm sharing that, that it's not going to be an easy walk. You don't have struggles in your flesh. Um, the scripture says once that those demons come out of you, they're going to revisit in another season. They're going to see the check in your house, your spirit, your soul to see if your body's clean. Mm -hmm. They're going to revisit again. And then those, you know, those at this time, because I went back into whoremonging. Those demons came back greater, you know. They come back I greater. Was, I was, you know, sleeping. The around. girls got more prettier. Yeah, right. You know, so now you know God is keeping me. I'm waiting for my wife. You know, I don't have that humonger spirit on me no more because I decided to dedicate my life to Christ and live for Him because He's going to send me that virtuous woman. You know, so I don't have a struggle with that area. I do see beautiful women. I, you know, I'm a man. You know, however, I don't go sleeping out. With uh, different females no more. I'm waiting till I get married. All praises, all praises. And, and uh, the brother's single. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you got high uh, expectations for a right, sister. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for you sisters out there that say they know single Hebrew brothers, there is. But uh, this scripture came to mind when you were speaking. It's Paul, okay, in Romans chapter seven and verse fifteen, showing mm -hmm. you that we do go through struggles. Right. Every last one of us, as long as you got breath in your body. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters alike, we go through struggles. And the same thing Paul knew. With Paul and Peter and the apostles and Jeremiah and the prophets, they was all mans just like us. They had mm -hmm. to fight this flush. Right. Okay, and uh, I take my hat off to you, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you've been single for quite a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, it's the I, most high. It's high I, I take my hat off to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, the Bible says, I don't. Uh, I don't think man should be alone. I can't be alone. I, I've been with a woman ever since I was 16 years old in a relationship, should I say. Right. But this scripture came to mind, Romans chapter 7, 15. For that which I do, I allow not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you had the scriptures in you, the word in you, but right. you still found yourself laying down with harlots. You know what I'm saying? Just call mm -hmm. it what it is. For that which I do, I allow not. Mm -hmm. For that I would, that do I not. Right. But what I hate, that do I. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, man, you know, I know I'm in the wrong. Right. But doing this here, regardless, I knew it. regardless yeah. what it is, but you're still doing it because mm -hmm. you was craving to the flesh. You was giving the flesh what the script tells us to die to self. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to read that again. See, yeah. uh, for that which I do, I allow not. Mm -hmm. For what I do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got to always fight in this flesh. Like I said, we got a trial. We have a tribulation. We have a testimony. Mm -hmm. And so do you. Right. You know what I'm saying? We see things that, you know, we lust off of. But only thing going to stop us from the lust mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, or should I say, strengthen us, give us strength in this lustful body that we is, is the word. Because mm-hmm. the Bible say what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Wow. If you got this word in you, brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying? You can always reflect back mm-hmm. and ask the most high eight. Hey, put the wobble walk, the Holy Spirit, to remind you of what you read. Right. Now, once you read, and you might even read something and still do something. A lot of people say, wear your fringes. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got people uh, uh, laying down with uh, uh, harlots and uh, whoremongers with fringes on their back. Throw the mm-hmm. fringes to the side. But this is showing you that this word has to be in you here, mm-hmm. right here in your mind. Right. And you got to love the most high unto death as we read. Mm-hmm. And love your life unto death for the most high. Right. All praise to the Father. I pray to the Most High. Anything else you want to say? Your testimony, um, brother? That's it. You know, just um, encourage my brothers and sisters, you know, to stay faithful, stay committed. You know, we're getting closer to the end. You know, we're already in Jacob's trouble, you know, so he's preparing us to get ready for the wilderness. He's preparing us to hear his voice, you know. So your testimony, let that um, be reflect. your... Reflect. Yeah, reflect on your te- your testimony. Let that be your foundation. And and, 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 mm-hmm. and make... Short videos. Because right. like I say, you don't know who you helping. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just send the, the, the trials of life that you're going through, that you've mm-hmm. been through, right. and that you're going to go through. Now, this is what I want to ask before I uh, mm-hmm. turn it over. What are you doing today in so-called 2017? Because we know trouble is coming. Right. It's going to get harder and harder. Mm-hmm. What are you doing today? Okay, mm-hmm. to build yourself up for the, the rocky the rocky road or the troubled road up ahead. What mm-hmm. are you doing today? Maybe you can help share that with right. something. Say, you know what? It's like you're preparing yourself right. for something that we know is coming. Mm-hmm. But what are you doing today? Are you at idle right now? Or mm-hmm. what are you doing today? I don't right. want to give you the answer, but what are you doing mm-hmm. today to prepare yourself for the mark of the beast? Right. You know what I'm saying? For a mm-hmm. cashless society. Right. What are you doing today, brother? Well, as as the scripture says in 2 Timothy um, 2.15, study to show thyself approved. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so I'm steady studying, reading his word, listen, continuously listening to his voice. You know, I'm picking up the Bible, I'm reading it, I'm studying it. And then also as a teacher, I'm able to get into the word more. I'm able to God's spirit fall on me, you know, to where I can understand scriptures more. I'm I'm careful who I fellowship with. I'm careful who I'm around. Say that again. I'm careful who I fellowship with. What that? What you mean you by know, that? What, what, what you I mean by, by that? that um, I don't no longer be with anybody now, as far as friends are concerned. Or um, if they don't keep the commandments, I don't deal with you. You know, um, I have to know that you're keeping God's commandments. You know, that's at least what, trying. Right, at least trying. You know, and that's what keeps me from getting out there, going back into sin again. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as old timers used to say, like my parents and grandparents, that. Um, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are, you know? So my circle is small. My circle is elder and my dad, you know? And that's it pretty much, you know, as far as who I fellowship with, you know? So that's what's keeping me, you know, that I use wisdom in the word. And not only do I read and study the word, I put action behind it, you know? So as the scripture says, prepare yourself as a pilgrim. I'm doing those things, you know? I'm not going to, you know, reveal everything that I'm doing, you know, but as far as hearing God's voice, implementing it and getting ready to prepare myself. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm keeping his commandments, you know, and I'm growing each, each day I'm growing in him and I'm hearing his voice. And that's a beautiful thing about it. I'm, I'm still able to hear his voice. All praises. And, and act. Well, I mean, the Holy Spirit is still, the most High is still the Holy Spirit to you to guide you. Mm -hmm. Like he told the disciples, I will put you in remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. I'll so meaning this is the word of the most high. Mm-hmm. So yes, we read it. We, we watch our videos and different right. classes of brothers. We're not, we're retaining everything in, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's, we call it deja vu. We I can't mm-hmm. pull it out at the time, but right. the Holy Spirit will come in and remind hour, you. As the scripture says. In that hour, the Holy Spirit, right. hey, you, you know, it does said the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, it does say the most high right. or whatever. But this this, this, this is where I, wanted, I thought you was going. What you did say, but you said, I want to hear it in your own words. Okay. Show you that what he said, the script already mentioned it. You know what I'm saying? This is in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of Ahia, mm. 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Talking about the tricks of the devil. Right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against mm -hmm. powers, against right. the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Okay? So wherefore, take unto you the whole armor mm -hmm. of the Most High, right. that you may be able to withstand the evil day, mm -hmm. having doing all to stand. Right. So read that on your own. So yeah, this is what we must continue to do. Right. It's like you read 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Second Study to show thyself. Right. Study mm -hmm. to show thyself approved unto the Most High. Mm -hmm. Not to me, not right. to your elder, to the Most High, because it's his words that's going to guide us through these dark days that's coming up. Mm -hmm. And believe me, brothers and sisters, they are coming up. Right. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. are coming up. So we got to always put on a whole suit of armor and walk in the spirit. Right. Walk in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we can withstand the lust of the flesh. Right. All praises. All praise to the most high. So, brothers and sisters, you be encouraged. And um, it's your testimony. That I read in Revelations. We say by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. All praise to the Father. All right. So, Elder, if you want to say your testimony. Yeah, why not, since we're here? Uh, because this is actually Deacon Ibod, uh week to do the class. But here at the Gathering of the Elect, we let the spirit flow. Right. I did my testimony a couple of years ago in, uh, uh, with a lot of brothers and sisters. So... But let's start it off new, because every day it's a new adventure. Every day we got a testimony. Right. My testimony, you know, I came into this truth like you, like most most of us today. Okay, most of us today, we all was raised up in uh, Christian sanity, which is Christianity. Okay, because that's all we knew. We were just slaves. You know what I'm saying? Our slave masters told our parents. Our parents told them that. So we all was raised up. Well, my folks was raised up as a Jehovah Witness. Okay. Jehovah Witness, my, I remember going as a child, going to the assemblies, you know what I'm saying, uh, up in Dodger Stadium, wherever they had them at. Mm -hmm. I was dragged along. For me, it was fun. I was a kid. We got to eat all kind of food and just so on and so forth. Right. So, of course, in my mom's house, there was always, you know, Bible studies with the Jehovah Witness. I ain't going to call them witnesses because <laughs> Israel is the witnesses of the Most High. I know that now. But uh, uh, the gym of wickedness, we used to do Bible study. Now, I've always been as a child. I'm number seven in my family. I'm the baby of the family. I'm number seven. So, of course, I wasn't a normal kid. I wasn't a kid that was outside playing with everybody. I was always up on grown folks' face, looking in their mouth. And I remember my mom said, boy, get up out of here. You know, these grown folks talking. As long as I didn't say nothing, I sit in the corner, I get to hear all the gossip. You know what I'm saying? But I was learning, not knowing that. Looking back on I was learning, taking in all this. I was always more advanced than my age, should I say, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, growing up as a child. Well, I remember at the Bible study, uh, I had to be about 12 years old at this time. We had a Bible study, a Jehovah Witness study at my mom's house in the living room, and I was always the one to ask questions. So this lady tells me, uh, she goes, well, she kept saying, Jesus was Michael. And I was like, no, I say Jesus. You know, you keep saying Michael. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, just like your name is, your family call you Jamie in the house. Mama, Jamie, get over here. My brothers call me Jamie. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in school, they call you James. Okay. So in heaven, his name is Michael. And then when he came to earth, his name was Jesus at 12 years old. That even sit right with me. I'm like, oh, okay. In my little mind, I'm like, she's full of it. So that made me start reading the book. At 12 years old, start reading the book. Of course, you got all kind of different things going on in your life as a child, raising up in Compton. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm from. Moved from Watts to Compton. So all kind of things during the 80s, you know, dope game and this, this, and that. Of course, I was into that at that, at that time. Uh, well, that made me start studying. So I went to Christian Sanity. Mm -hmm. So I go to churches <laughs> and I was a faithful going. I went to the Catholic church and I was like, man, this is more like a Godfather movie. All these statues and stuff in here. Cause that was sort of like the Exodus. That's when it came out. That was mm -hmm. kind of scary to me. So right. I hurry up and backed up off of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I hung around a lot of Mexicans with the, uh, we call Issachar today. And every time they pass by our church, they give them the sign of the cross. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And we just got through doing a drive by, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We just got through freaking these girls out. Well, you want to cross up. So that was like, okay, this is more of a ritual thing. 
I understood that. I knew I was done with the Jehovah Wickedness. Well, and I was going to Christianity at the time, and I kid you not, bro, it was like a dream. And I was confused. Now, mind you, years in past, I'm like 16, 17 years old now, and I'm kind of confused because this is what Babylon mean, confusion, people. And I was confused. That's why you can be anything and everything you want to be in America. Okay? Now, I was confused. I remember having a dream. I, I don't know if everybody remember the Scooby-Doo vans. It was a Scooby-Doo van. It was two of them where you got to slide the door. Not the doors that open like this. It was the ones you slide the door. And I was sitting on the side of a curve. It was two vans. The top of the vans was cut out. Mm -hmm. It was cut out. And everybody I knew mm -hmm. from the Christian church... You know what I'm saying? It was nice people, not bashing Christians. They, they really got a good heart. You know, they was nice people, okay? They was like, come over here. Come over here. Now, mommy, I'm on the sidewalk, and all the people from my family that was dealing with wickedness, they was like, get in here, Jamie. Get in here. And I was going back and forth, back and forth, looking at them like, man, I love both of these people. I'm confused because I was going to the, yeah. sim uh, the, uh, the assemblies, the Jehovah Wickedness Hall, Kingdom Hall. I was trying to deal with uh, Catholics and Christians and so on and so forth. So I was confused as a young man. So, of course, what did I do? I got into the van with my parents and all my grandmothers and people that I knew was family. Okay? And then when I got in the van, the door opened. I got in. You can't see the driver, people. You can't see the driver. So when I got in, the door shut. And they said, you know, I heard a voice go, ah! <laughs> it was the devil. I just see the face. It was, I just heard that wicked voice. Okay? It was like, bam. So the script was telling me there, don't even deal with that. Okay? And I knew Christianity was fake. Fake is all day. Mind you, I got in the gym with witness van because that's what my family was with. Of course, I started going back to the Christian church, started observing things. And, okay, this, this is more of a ritual too because no one's reading the script. As a young man, I knew that. And they don't like you to ask questions. So I was always asking questions. I got booted out of the church way before I knew about a Hebrew. <laughs> Okay, well, before that, so moving on, of course, I just left it all along. The 80s came, I became a dope dealer, you know what I'm saying? Never gang bang, became a dope dealer, you know, young man, an idle mind is a devil workshop. I was into sports, I was gonna be in the 1984 boxing, the Olympics, okay? I had an accident on my job, I couldn't make that, okay? So I uh, started playing football in high school, okay? After that, you in Compton, everybody around you, niggas that never went to school, mm -hmm. making money, pocket full of money. Okay, I'm like, man, what they doing? You know what I'm saying? They say, you know, I got into the dope game. Dope game from the dope game, we end up getting caught, going to the penitentiary. Okay, spend time in the penitentiary. I got out. I'm like, man, I'm done with this life, man. I'm done with this life. I don't want nothing to do with this. Okay, so what I did, like you said earlier, you know what I'm saying? The most I would sit you down for a minute. He would say, I got set down for five years yeah. in the penitentiary, straight. Ain't no time in hell. Got set down. You know what I'm saying? Bam, I had time to think. Had time to think what was going on around me. After I got the pen, okay, of course, all my homeboys, because I, I was more of a, a muscle man, should I say. You was on my team, or if I was on your team, well, nobody going to take nothing from you because they know it was repercussion afterwards. So everybody trying to get me on their team. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, come hang, go hang out. They called me Shadow. That was my street name, Shadow. Hey, Shadow, man, come hang. I was like, nah, bro, I ain't dealing with none of that. You know what I'm saying? And once my no was my no, the same way y'all see me right now, this is the way I was on the street. Yes is yes, no is no. Mm -hmm. So I remember me and my rib, man. I mean, I was so broke, I couldn't pay attention. <laughs> Believe me. I mean, I went from a life of four or five cars, money in your pocket, nice apartments, and this and that. Everything was cool and dandy. When mm -hmm. I got out the penitentiary, I was so broke, I couldn't pay attention. I ended up mm -hmm. staying with my brother in a bachelor, a kitchen net, so to say. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife used to watch cars, you know, wash cars, you know what I'm saying, because by my by the reputation I had on the street, these dudes got five thousand dollar paint jobs on their car. Hey, bro, let me watch your car. I right, shadow here. I watched their car. We were stacking our down like that until so things just got better for us, and we moved on. My rib right now. So uh, as life went on, of course, I got me a gig. Okay, and I was still doing my whoremongering on the side, you know. And uh, I remember going to Venice Beach. Going to Venice Beach, okay? This is how the most I put, how I came into the truth. No, matter of fact, matter of fact, I got to back up. Uh, uh, before Venice Beach, me and my real, we had started going to church, okay? One of these tent churches. They never had a building. They got tents all over the place. Right. Okay, so we went, was in uh, South Central Los Angeles at this uh, park, and we did that little study, and then everybody out there playing basketball on a Sunday, okay? And these brothers came through. 
These brothers came through them like Sinbad. You know, with the, you know the Hebrews dressed up with yeah, their yeah. garments. They rolling yeah, through. Sinbad. Now, everybody was all over confunction, you know, like the Gap Band or something. All mm. these brothers, everybody was all spread over the park. Because the service was over, we just doing a so-called picnic. Okay, you know what that word, pick a nigga. So we was just kicking back. And these brothers ran through, looking like come function, some bad, and this and that. So, you know, the, the the leaders of the church jumped up like they protected the flock. No, no, don't talk to them. Don't talk to them. i always been the man like, whoa, hold on. This dude got a Bible. This dude got a Bible. You know, you can't tell me. Who I was, or that tells maybe my uh, early 20s, I mean late 20s. He said, no, you can't tell me who to talk to. So the brother, they were just flying through. They gave a flyer. Everybody know that flyer. Deuteronomy chapter 28, the slave ships, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So just like any other Negro, I got the flyer, looked at it, you know. But I remember the uniforms. I looked at them like, wow, man, this is cool. You know what I'm saying? I caught put it in my pocket. Day time went on. Maybe like six months later, I'm cheating on my wife. You know what I'm saying? I'm at Venice Beach with this little honey. And uh, we're walking down Venice Beach, and I see these brothers over there. I'm like, I remember the uniform. I'm like, hey, that's some brothers. So I went over there and, and started listening to them. And it sort of like attracted me. Not so much was the words that was coming out their mouth. It's how the, they on Venice Beach, all these white folks walking around. Mm -hmm. And they tell them they devils and people licking the dust off their feet. And these brothers were strong. It was unity. Mind you, I'm, I'm, I was born in 64. I'm 53 years old. And... I, I, re, I wasn't raised up with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And I was like, man, this is some stuff that I read about, about Malcolm X and stuff. So I actually was uh, intrigued with the way they was, the, unif the unification they had. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not the words. So the brothers gave me a flyer and the school was right down on Western. Mm -hmm. Right there in uh, Western Engage. So, of course, I went there. And everything was white man doctrine, of course, during that time, Rodney King and all this stuff. And like, yeah, yeah, we 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 looking for someone to blame for our own fault. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was caught up into that. As time went on, they actually these brothers was reading the Bible. It wasn't, they weren't the same brothers that was like on the street teaching, like at Venice Beach in the class. These brothers was more humble. They actually popped this Bible open and they was reading it. Mm. And it was answering all the questions that I had. And things that I was wondering about. It was it was just painting a picture for me. And from that point on, I, I was, you know, I was in like Mr. Flynn. Okay, I had to be to work at 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and we didn't get out of class till 11 o'clock that night. So I would just literally just go home from work, eat something, take a little quick nap. Because class started at 7. And roll down the street, you know what I'm saying? And uh, mm -hmm. be in class till 11. Get home by 11.30. So I, far I stood, I mean, close I stood to the place. After we finished cleaning up. Get up in the morning because of work. I was a supervisor at a plant, and uh, would be there. Of course, that that uh, didn't play out too well. Okay, uh, uh, I ain't gonna say I grew it, but you know, the most I revealed what these brothers was really up to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it hurt it, brothers. It hurt. I tell brothers when that uh, breakup became uh, what well, GOCC right. and uh, that wasn't new to me. Okay, this stuff happened twenty years ago. But it hurt because I'm dealing with these brothers every day, 24-7 a day when I'm not at work, okay? And and when that little shenanigan happened, it broke up the school, okay? Now, I was hurt. I'm saying it's like a girl left me. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, man, it's the, bond, it, uh, the, brother, the brother boat was yeah, gone. Everybody just scattered, you know what I'm saying? What, but and then so after that, I slipped back up. I idle mind is a devil workshop. You ain't got the fellowship and it's not. I started going back out. I knew the truth. Under the Shabbat, I'm going to work every day, and the devil started playing little mind games. Man, you work every day. You know, why you don't go out on Friday? You know, it, it's a party. Go out on Friday. <laughs> so, little by little, I started going out on Friday. Okay? They see, you know, never ate no pork. I still mm -hmm. kept the dietary law, so I go on Friday. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm stronger than that. Start going on Saturday. You know what I'm saying? They, before you know it, you stop hearing that the Holy Spirit, the voice. Because you see, right. the more you ignore the Holy Spirit, the less the voice you're going to hear. Well, as I went back into my vomit, as the scripts say, I end up, you know what? Nah, I'm going to join a motorcycle club. Bought me an uh, Indian motorcycle. Ended up buying me a Harley Davidson motorcycle. That took me through a, a different course of life. I'm like, well, I ain't out there gang banging, out there dope slanging. I'm in a motorcycle. It's a brotherhood. Right. It's a brotherhood, you know, so start doing that. Did that for a long, long time. Now, mind you, I'm knowing the script. 
I'm knowing the script because once I say, once you're in his hand, he would never leave you. And no mm -hmm. one can take you out. Right. He say he chastised the ones he yeah. loved. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm in, the, I'm in the motorcycle club, man, man, over 15, 20 years. You know, I'm in there. I mean, everybody knows Shadow. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so on and so forth. Well, the Most High allowed things to happen. Okay? I end up, I wreck many motorcycles, but this one here, I'm, I'm starting like the Spirit starts speaking back to me. Like, hey, you know, leave that life alone. Leave that life alone. You're going too deep. You're going too deep. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just going to know it. Okay. The most I chastised me. I had an accident on my motorcycle, in my cars, motorcycle, and other things in between. The most I was doing to me. Right. Okay. I had a good job. I had a damn good job. Took care of my family. One thing I always did, even though I was out there whoremongering and doing all this stuff, I always took care of my seven children in my rear. So you never had to worry about nothing. But that was, to me, the devil was, you, man, you do all this. You, 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 you should have some time. Let your hair down. You doing all this, you know what I'm saying? But no, this way the devil play games and mind games on you. Well, anyway, the devil start. I mean, the Most High start chastising me, and the last chastisement. I'm gonna go through. I mean, I go through one. Me and my boy out at Norms. I'm getting off of work. I slide by his tilt. He was like, "Yeah, man, I want to go out, man. I want to go out. I want to go out bad, man." It was on a Thursday night. Okay, As a matter of fact, it was a Wednesday night. So we we push it to uh, Carson. We go out. I said, I'm going to go home, shower up. I'll come back, pick him up. We shoot out to Carson uh, and have a good time. You know what I'm saying? We got in before we had to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the happy hours thing. So we had a good time. Right. After that, we went to Spires to go eat. It's more like a Denny's. Go to eat. So we sitting there eating and stuff. There's two couples sitting there, uh, uh, a Samoan. Two, it was four Samoan. Uh, two girls and two guys. So me and my boy sitting at the little table. We're sitting there eating and we chopping it up. It's like 2.30 in the morning, you know, crack of dawning. And we sitting there chopping up. And uh, the two dudes get up and they leave. We leave the two females there. And then next thing you know, I said about 15 Samoans came up. Now, mind you, the owl is so small. This part of my chastisement. Now, mind you, I'm still knowing the truth. I just ain't got nobody to hang out with. You know what I'm saying? The class broke up. And um, we sitting there eating. And then all these Samoans walked in. Mind you, the owl is so small. So first thing I do, you know, being from Compton, I grab my butter knife in one hand, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grab the fork in the other hand. And they standing over the table. So the Samoan dude like, hey, what's up? I'm like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. We'll see what's up outside. And all these things just mobbed out. Now, me and my boy, Carlos, we like, man, you know, we ain't got no guns. You know, we left that life a long time ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we not even in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, wow, man. So, all right, bro, you know, I ain't going out there. You ain't going out there. We don't know what's waiting for us out there, but we let each other. What the hell? What, what that was about? Right. So it was a telephone booth down the hallway by the by the, uh, the two bathrooms. So he goes and I say, this is what you do. Go and call 911. So when we see the sheriffs pull up in the parking lot, we just leave in our car. We'll book it back to Compton. Mm -hmm. Well, while we doing that, I'm, I'm on the side like this, looking at them through the big old Denny's window, and they pass through. They say, you know, AK-47. Wow, 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 all in the restaurant. Through the metal door. My back is against the door, looking through the window. I knew it was the most high. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know. Next thing I know, I end up in the kitchen, in the back of Denny's. Okay, my boy Carlos, he get hit. He Thank God he didn't die. He get hit. They pull off. I looked at that door. That's what my back was at. Bullet straw through that door. The look, mm. uh, exit door, the emergency exit, all through that door. I knew then. But me being hard headed, stiff neck as Israel is, that didn't that didn't right. stop me. I was untouchable. But the last ordeal that happened to me was that I was coming. I went back to the set. I went to my homeboy house, and I was playing Christian music. Uh, not no Hebrew music. I was playing Christian music. It, the Hebrew music wasn't out like it is today, brothers and sisters. I was playing Christian music, okay? Mm -hmm. Just uh, Paul Shepard, this brother named Paul Shepard. Matter of fact, it was a class that he was giving. I'm going to the devil's den, you know, starting the fence, so to say. I'm mm -hmm. trying to come back into the truth, so I got music on my bike, you know. I'm, you know, Man, we don't want to hear that. We ain't trying to hear that, one of my homeboys. I was trying to hear that name, Tim. So I get into it with him, like... Nigga, what type of nigga don't want to hear the word, man? What's wrong with you, man? This, this, and that. 
But I, nobody else said nothing, but I knew how they felt. Mm -hmm. So I jumped on I jumped on my bike, on my hog, and I hit it. Why? I didn't give a I didn't give two ham sandwiches about life. Because mm. I was confused, just like that van incident. And I'm hitting it. Why? Down to 105. And just pow, another car. Hit the hit the side of a car, bam, in the carpool lane. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Fell down, wasn't out. I was trying to get up, couldn't get up. I broke three ribs. I don't remember going to one hospital, St. Francis. I must have blanked out after that. And I end up in Kaiser. It wasn't a voice, brothers and sisters, like, Gabar, this and that. It wasn't that type of voice. It was a voice inside your right, head. Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, no, it's an inner voice. And this, what this voice said to me was, your grace card going to run out. Mm. You go back out there, this is your last chance. Your grace card going to run out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, from that point on, I couldn't do nothing. Or put it like this. Before my ribs broke, I broke my shoulder mm. in the car accident. That tried to slow me down there. Soon I can hit the throttle, I was back on the road. Then I broke my rib. That voice came to me. That this is it. You go back out there, it's a done. Stick a fork in you. Grace card ran out. So I'm sitting on my couch about three months. Only thing I, I didn't know what YouTube was. I'm old school. My daughter bought me an iPad. Dad, the brother's on YouTube. What the hell is YouTube? Mm -hmm. I will sit there every day just listen to it. Listen, different classes. Mind you, where I come from, I know the game. Right. I know the game that they run. They call them alphabet boys now. Okay, uh, uh, General Yohanneke and and uh, all them cats. That's that's who I came up. I, I, what they call them? Uh, uh, One West? Uh, One West Doctrine. Right. That's what I came up. That's the only thing was out there. <laughs> but here in Los Angeles. Anyway, uh, I'm sitting there. I know a little of the word, so I can say, okay, this is where I come from. Nah, I ain't with that all the white man is the devil and this and this and that and wow, I've been there. Okay, nah. Mm -hmm. So I'm flipping through and I see Brother Raka, young brother. And I'm like, man, you know, okay, let me check this brother out. I listen to Raka for maybe about two two months. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I listen to him say, this brother, you know, okay, he got the zeal. He look like he know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he was had a radio show. I called it up. The only thing I called the radio show, just give him his props. Hey, bro, I like what you're teaching, young man. Keep doing what you're doing. And the brother said, hey, brother, uh, you old school, huh? I'm like, yeah, that's right. You say, all right, brother. You know I have a card, dude. Yeah. All right, brother. I'm, I got your number right here. I'm, I'm, I'm taking right. your number yeah, down, brother. brother. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have somebody call you. <laughs> I'm like, well, all right, I, you know, that's not what I'm looking for, you know, but yeah. all right, you know, I'm just saying you're doing a good job, brother. All right, shalom, shalom. Boom, fame, farm hung up. I say about two months later, maybe a month and a half, Deacon Balas called me, okay, from Vegas. He called me, and we chop it up, you know what I'm saying? Me and the brother got real close, this and that, and uh, he's a young brother and uh, with a, a whole lot of zeal, and uh, and he started telling me things about, you know, what you think about this, brother, and what you think about this. And I'm like, well, brother, according to the script, this, you ain't supposed to do this, and snap, whatever. Anyway, I came into GOCC. I went in GOCC four months. I became a deacon. After that, uh, Elder Gabar from uh, New York, mm. he called me. He wouldn't make me an elder. I said, well, hold on, bro. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about no elder stuff, you know. Uh, and I said, give me time to think about it. Well, the script came to me, you know, how, how can you refuse something that the most I gave you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I came back. I said, yeah, brother, I want you to be over the West Coast. I'm like, all right, brother, you know, I, I, it's a big task. So, I mean, I took on the task. And I kid you not, brothers and sisters, it was a hard task. But the most high is not going to put nothing in front of you that you mm -hmm. cannot bear. Right. Okay? I remember sitting up late at night. I'm like, man, you got Seattle, you got this, you got this. And, you know, I know how Negroes is. I just came out of the world. And I'm like, man, I want to do the, I want to be righteous with the most high. I don't want to just, mm -hmm. you know, hurt his people. Rather... Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, how do I do this all over? Man, how, how, how I'm going to do this? Where I start at? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting up late at night, brother, and a, a suicide commercial came on, that suicide hotline, come on, about 2 or 3 in the morning. It came on, and it was talking about people committing suicide and so on and so forth. And the brother said on there, you have to start over. Forget about your past and distance and that and start over. That was my answer. Mm. That was my answer. How to start, you know, the West Coast. So, 
Forget about everything. Everything you went through, just start from the bottom. I start from the bottom. Got Deacon Balas. There's only me and Deacon Balas. Mm -hmm. That Deacon Balas, I don't care who been in this truth, how long they've been in the truth, don't matter. They have to call me because I need to get to know the people. Right. And from that point on, it built up. West yeah. Coast was built up. We yeah, had it was, we had brothers and sisters fellowship and seven nights of uh, conference calls and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And um, the little incident happened with Raka, mm -hmm. where he wanted to just smash all that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody depend upon the brother. And I was like, nah, brother, because I, I seen this before. Right. I used to tell the, all the deacons and stuff, hey, bro, I seen this picture before. It just you just paint the picture with a different brush, but it's just come out the same. Okay. You can put lipstick on a pig, it's still pork. Well, I seen this, and I told the brothers, prepare yourself. During the Passover, when we did the, the Passover. Mm -hmm. I said, prepare yourself, bro. We're going to get hit. I don't know where it's coming from. Right. Because I mean, the West Coast is building. I don't mm -hmm. know where it's going to come from, brother, but we're going to get hit. Just be prepared. About the leavened bread. The about unleavened bread, bread, right. Well, uh, it came from the inside. From the brothers that we had respect for. Because I never put a man above Christ. And that would broke the West Coast up. Now, everybody was calling me because they did an eight-hour class on me, saying I was a bad guy. <laughs> it never got a chance to speak, uh, wow. defend myself. Brothers out there that went and came against me because they had jealous of me. Why? I don't know because any decision we made, we made it as a body. It never wow. was like, my way, the highway, this and that. And this all through my testimony, brothers and sisters. So I had to learn. Mind you, I've seen that picture before. So when things happened, I wasn't shocked at all. Because mm -hmm. I know the the, uh, the character of our people. People would call me, and you all right? You okay? I'm good. I'm good. I searched out my own salvation. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? So I learned something from that. And here we at today. Okay? It was time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. Okay? To move on and stay focused on the mission. And the mission is do what? Teach the people. Not for you to look up to me and as I'm your savior. Because I have a kingdom, I don't have no kingdom to put you under. So me going forward, say I'm gonna answer the question that I ask you: mm -hmm. What I'm doing today to to continue down that path? Okay, even I fell off, and in that time I fell off, and I got up and I repented. The Bible said a righteous man falls seventy mm -hmm. times, but he get back up. I mm -hmm. fell off. There ain't been no smooth ride. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I can tell you, I fell off. But after that accident on the motorcycle, okay. I kind of slipped up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Slipped a little bit. Man, I felt bad. I felt mm -hmm. bad, 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 bad. People, y'all don't know. It's like the script say, when we see Christ, we're going to mourn like we mourn for our first child. I felt bad. Every time I looked in the mirror, I was like, damn, how you let yourself do that? Oh, man, stupid. You know, whatever it may be. Okay, I broke the Sabbath or whatever. Okay, it was, just, it was hurt. Every time I broke a law, it hurt it. To the point where myself, my spirit was convicting me, okay? Even to this day, when I slip up, it my spirit convicted me. But the point is this. What I'm going to do, how I'm going to encourage myself, first and, first, first and foremost, how I'm going to encourage myself to stand this truth with the word. Putting on the whole suit of armor. Mm -hmm. Do my damnness to walk, keep this law, statute, commandment to the best of my ability. Okay? Walk in the spirit. And kill this flesh on a daily basis. You ain't going to kill your flesh in one day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill it on a daily basis. And not only that, love what you're saying, brother. I'm just going to say it a different way. You got to change your playground, people. If you're going to change your life, you got to change your playground. Mm -hmm. You hang around with a dog, you're going to wake up with fleas. Okay? It's that simple. You hang out with whores, you're going to be a hoe. Okay, just like in I think in the book of James, if your brother drank, and there's nothing wrong with drinking, it's wrong with getting drunk. Right. If your brother drank and that was his weakness, don't drink around him. Like nah, you know I know I buy he was on the alcohol real strong, but I really want to get my drink on. Nah, just keep it away. That's the love. But right. you got to do that to yourself. You know your weakness more than anybody. Mm -hmm. If I go out and start hanging in the clubs, and it, a woman is every man's weakness, right? <laughs> Unless you gay. <laughs> right. A woman is every man weakness. Was it not Adam weakness? Mm -hmm. Huh? David. Huh? David? Great man's. 
Okay, so I know that if I start hanging back at the club, right. and they talk about booty popping, dropping, dropping, this and that, and you see one of them uh, uh, young pretty things walk by, and you be like, and I, okay, the first time you might not, it might not bother you. You be like, yeah, 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 all right, she just like a hoe. And you keep going back and keep going back and keep going back, mm -hmm. and they say, you know, you're going to hear what? <laughs> and then you're going to be like, damn, how did I get here? I did. And then yeah. the most I'm going to send that death decree out for you. Who you going to blame? Or should I say, who am I blame? So I keep myself away from that. I go to work. I come home. Sometimes I, I don't come outside. You know what I'm saying? Not that I'm afraid, but it's nothing out there. Like the song say, there's nothing out there for me. Right. I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. So I'm trying to get to the finish line. And while we're telling our testimony today, trying to encourage you mm -hmm. to get to the finish line. Only you can get to the finish line. You right. can't ride on my back. You can't ride on that brother back. Or your mom and your daddy. Mm -hmm. Christ already laid the road down. He's the foundation. He already laid the path. All they want to do is just stay on that righteous path. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it, like I say, brothers and sisters, it's a lot more I can say. Right. But this, hey, you got a lot more you can say. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more Yeshia can say, but he put it in this book. Right. He said, if, it, if you did the testimony of Christ, everything, the books will reach all the way to heaven. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's not yeah. about how much sin you have done in your life right it's what you have learned right. off the things that you have done mm -hmm. how can you better yourself encourage yourself to get to the finish line right. not only yourself your brothers your sisters you be that walking testimony mm -hmm. with that i'm brother gabar aka elder gabar from the gathering of the leg you want anything else you want to say yeah um i want to go over a few scriptures oh all. come on yeah yeah go ahead brother and um powerful testimony elder and i thank the most high for you man that he kept you and you was obedient to his voice and his word man because one thing i learned um as i'm reflecting now is that when you are called by the most high and he's speaking to you and he's guiding you mm -hmm. he will always put the tools and resources for you you know as, as the most I was dealing with Elder, he was dealing with me, and he brought us together, you see? And he prepared that pathway for us to come together. And even though we had that fallout, everything is already prepared. Like, I had a dream when I came to Elder. Remember I shared it with you? Yeah, I had a dream yeah. with um, um, the Lord showed me in the dream, and um, this is before the, um, the confusion went on. It said, Jeffro, you know? And I was in the dream, and I'm like, Jeffro, God, what are you telling me? You know, I read that scripture before with uh, Moses' um, father-in-law. Mm -hmm. You know, but I went to the to the to the scriptures, and I I started reading about Jeffro, and the Lord was speaking through me through that message that you're gonna help Elder, you know, you're gonna help him carry the weight of the ministry that oh, I gave do I need to it. Elder. Do I need? You know, it. and that's what stuck in me. So when we had the fallout. God already spoke to me already to stay right there. You know, I could have went with the brothers, you know, as they cited, but I knew God spoke to me already. You know, so he'll always position you and warn you to stay well, on path. Yeah, yeah, know? it's like he had the disciple. He sent them out two by two. Mm -hmm. No, you know, you don't need to, I, me, I tell you, I'm not trying to draw a man to my right, side. Right, right. I mean, I like it just like this, just mm -hmm. like this. Right. You know, we have brothers and sisters call me. Hey, brother, I tell thus said the Lord, you want to come up for the feast day? Come up for the feast day. Mm -hmm. But I don't need you smelling my breath every day. <laughs> right. You know, man, yeah, looking up to me like I'm, 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 some, yeah. I'm somebody. Because that, that's what happened to uh, Moshe, Moses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you give a Negro a rope, you think he's a cowboy. Right. Now, I know how, how big our head can get pumped up. Mm -hmm. Oh, elder this. Oh, elder that. Oh, right. elder. Oh, elder. Uh, I got a spin in my finger, elder. I got this in my finger. I can't. I can't. I can't make Israel. a bowel movement right. because my elder said this. No. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Right. I don't need that much power because I know what power destroy de destroy us because we was never meant to have that much power. The king, right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? The king, Israel wanted the king. Right. Not the mm -hmm. most I want to give him a king. He told, he told what, uh, 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 Samuel. Yes, no, Samuel. no, no, leave him alone. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what they want. That's on them. They gave him Saul. Right. We always look, looking to look up to somebody. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm your brother. First and foremost, I'm your brother. And mm -hmm. guess what? I pray that you head in the same way I'm heading, trying mm -hmm. to get to that finish line. Right. That's it. Yeah. If you want to come, fellowship, talk on the phone. We'll talk mm -hmm. till your ears bleed. But the same token, you got to search out your own salvation. 
Right. You got to get in this script and read the book. I know mm -hmm. you ain't got that much time to read the book, brothers and sisters, because life is pounding on you. The most I get you videos. Yeah. The Bible will talk to you. So much, so many things to get this word. It's no excuse. Better make time. We had an excuse before Christ came. <laughs> you say, now that you know, you ain't got no more excuse. Right. It's all on you. Your blood on your own hand. Yeah. But go ahead, let's read the script. All right, let's get these scripts. So, um, brothers and sisters, we pray that this testimony has touched you. We're going to give you some scriptures to uh, edify us some more. We're going into Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to, uh, let's see. Let's get verses, start at verse 20. And we're going to read to 33. And I pray that you'll wake up and that for those who are encouraged, stay encouraged. And I pray that you, you stay with, with the body, find you a body, find you an elder. Um, the scripture says, um, don't for, forsake the assembly. So get with the body so you can be edified and grow. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. You're right. Wisdoms, wisdom crieth without. Mm -hmm. She uttered her voice in the streets. Now, remember, I was hearing God's voice all the time, but I kept putting putting God's voice out. Go ahead. She Verse 21. She crieth in the chief places of con concurs, in the opening of the gates. Mm -hmm. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, mm -hmm. How long, ye simple ones, mm -hmm. will ye love some simplicity? So that basically, guys, like, how long are you going to in indulge in this? Stupidity. Um, yeah, stupidity. This um, iniquities. Your sin. Go ahead. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Mm -hmm. And the scorner delight in their scorning. Mm -hmm. And the fools hate knowledge. Meaning you enjoying your sin. You enjoy hanging around the wicked, you know. How long you going to hate the knowledge? How long you going to hate my word? How long you going to turn away from me as I speak to you? Go ahead. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Mm -hmm. Behold, I mean before, I mean shit. Behold. Uh, be, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I will make known my words unto you. Do you hear that? God's gonna get your attention. He's gonna make He's gonna make sure you understand it was Him that's speaking to you. He said, "Turn, turn, turn around my correction." Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. Turn you at my reproof, which means correction. Right. Behold. Mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit unto you. Mm -hmm. I will make known my words unto you. He gonna get your attention. Go Verse ahead. twenty four. Because I have called and you refused. Mm -hmm. I have stretched out my hands and no man regarded. Mm -hmm. Regarded. Twenty five. Mm -hmm. But ye have set at naught all my counseling mm -hmm. and would and would none. And with none of my reproof. Mm -hmm. Verse 26, 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. Now, did you hear that? So, as you, from this day forward, as you go on, you continue to stay in your sins. You continue to rebel. When a situation arises, and it will arise if you're rebelling out there. Right. And the most, the, I say, the most I say, you turned your ears away from my correction. Mm -hmm. Like I read my testimony. I was right. like, ah, man, you know. I got five broken ribs. I, nah. Right. Like I ain't Tupac listening to that. Did, you know? I ain't there like Tupac did. Right. I got shot five times and went bragging about it. Went right back to the vomit. Right. Let me read that again. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. But ye have set at naught all my counseling. In other mm -hmm. words, you don't want to hear the counseling of the brothers. Right. Okay? And with and then with none and with none of my reproof. Mm -hmm. You didn't even want the reproof. You didn't even want understanding right. reproof. Right. You don't want the correction. Verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. Mm -hmm. I will mock mm. when your fear cometh. Mm -hmm. What that mean? Man, you gonna when when you get scared and fear when a death decree, not death decree, but your when problems. Situation, yeah, your problems come calamity. Like because you know, uh, go ahead. Like someone gonna kill you, shoot you, set you up, whatever that calamity that you gonna go through because you don't want to take heed. God said he gonna don't call on me. Yeah, don't, call don't call on me. me because he said you don't want to, verse 20, 25 say mm -hmm. you don't want to take none of my reproof. Right. You don't want to take none of my counseling. Mm -hmm. But now because it's come, we all going through it. That's why right. he said, I, I also will laugh. Mm -hmm. Meaning, also mean you laughed at my word right. when I'm trying to reprove you and show you love and mm -hmm. correct you. Now the most high say, I will. I will also laugh at your commandity, mm -hmm. and I will mock mm. when your fear come. Mm -hmm. You know how he's mocking. Like, yeah, look at, look at, at Kabar. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> hey, Jeff, come over, Gabriel, Michael, Michael, come here. Look at him. 
Don't call on him. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. When your fear cometh, cometh as a desolation, mm -hmm. and and your destruction cometh mm -hmm. as a whirlwind. As a whirlwind, boy. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Right. So you're not guaranteed what, what Elder went through, what I went through, the whirlwind, destruction, when all that come at you, you're not guaranteed. I'm going to share that in a minute. Most likely going to laugh at you. Right. Go ahead. Verse 28. Then shall they call. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Then shall they call upon me, mm -hmm. but I will not answer. Mm -hmm. They shall seek me early, mm -hmm. but they shall not find me. Mm. Y'all just don't understand. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 29. For that they hated knowledge mm -hmm. and did not choose to fear, choose the fear of the Lord, mm -hmm. they would they would none of my counsel. Mm-hmm. They despise all mm -hmm. my reproof. So right now, this testimony that you receive, you despise God is speaking through us to warn you, to let you know He's real. Don't despise His word. Don't despise His His prophets, His teachers. He's sending before you. Go ahead. Thirty one. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruits of their own ways? Mm. You reap what you sow. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruits? Of their own ways mm -hmm. and be filled with their own dis device. Mm -hmm. 30, 32. For the turning away of the simple shall say, mm. uh, shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Mm. 33. But whoso hearken, which means listen mm -hmm. unto me, shall dwell safely mm -hmm. and shall be quiet from fear. Of evil. So do you hear that, Israel? So those who take heed and respond to God's voice, the let, scripture says he's going to hearken. Go well, let me put it in Lang's term, uh -huh. okay? Let me put it in Lang's term where we can understand, okay? In a nutshell, the most I saying this here, when he's trying to reprove you, accept that. Mm -hmm. Don't reject his counseling. Mm. And if you do reject his counseling, he said he's going to laugh at your calamity. Mm -hmm. You're going to call upon his name on that day. You know, we all get to it. Oh, Lord, help me, please. He's going to laugh. And he ain't going to hear you. Mm -hmm. He said, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Whatever you put out, that's what you're going to get back. That's what you're going to get. And then he turns around and says, but the one, verse 33, but whoso hearken unto me should mm -hmm. dwell safely. If mm -hmm. you listen to the Most High and accept mm -hmm. his reproof, you're going to dwell safely. Mm -hmm. Okay? And she'll be quiet. From the fear of evil. Mm -hmm. You ain't all stirred up. Oh, Iraq is hitting uh, this, that, and North Korea. And you're scared. Flee, flee. This, huh? And you're scared. He said, nah. Right. The ones that know the most high and listen to his reproof, he said, you're going to be cool as ice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be troubled. These things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. But the end is not yet. Matthew right. chapter 24. So um, you can read this on your own. Um, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. And then Romans chapter 9, verses 13 through 24, okay? You can read that on your own. It has to tie with the um, Proverbs about God um, will laugh at your calamity. And if you call on him, see, God has mercy on who he has mercy on. You can read that in Romans 9. Yes, sir. Because I called on Yeshia. He could have laughed at me, but like the scripture says, he has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy on. I wasn't entitled to it at all, but he, he decided to show me mercy. Because you reached out first. Right. You shall say, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. If you open the door, he will come in and dwell with you. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to knock the door down and say, hey, Bob, I'm here. Right. No. No. Uh-uh. No. We're we free will spirits. Right. Free spirits. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You want him to come in and dwell? He come in and dwell. Let's right. end it right here, brother, because the thing about to get low. But uh, anything you want to say something? Uh, no, let me, let me uh, say something because this is your class. Okay. Hey, uh, Israel and Gentiles alike, if you come across this video, okay, take heed that we all going through it. Mm -hmm. We all got a test. Therefore, we got a testimony. And encourage each other. Don't hold no animosity to no brother at all. How can you say you love Christ? And you hate your brother, what you see every day. You don't take nothing else from this video. Don't hold no hatred in your heart. Right. It's worse than cancer. 
Because this hatred that you hold in your heart, one towards another, cancer just kill your body. Hatred kill your soul. Mm. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to um, end it on this on Philippians chapter 1. Yeah, read that. Yeah, I read it. Um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Josiah Christ. Right. In other words, he would never leave us or forsaken us. He started a good work in you. Mm -hmm. He will finish that good work. Right. Only if you allow him to dwell within you. What do you mean by that, Gabar? What do you mean? I let the Most High dwell within me. Mm -hmm. His words, brothers and sisters. Mm. You, his words dwell into you. And the Holy Spirit will come and put you in remembrance. Right. Whatsoever you heard his word mm. or read his word. Mm. But you got to be obedient servants. Right. I say, return unto me and I will return unto you. Thus said the Lord, not the gathering of the elect. So with that, we're going to say Shabbat Shalom. Pray that you enjoyed this lesson and edified you and your brothers right. and sisters in your body. Deacon Ibot, uh, the beautiful, this Deacon Ibot, I did do a testimony. Okay. And uh, it turned out pretty swell, brother. That's how the Because that's how the walk will walk work, the Holy right. Spirit. Mm -hmm. So uh, going forward, we most high will and we'll be back next week with an edifying lesson and uh to encourage our brother and sister to get to the finish line. Right. With that, I'm Brother Gabar, aka Elder Gabar. I'm brother um Iba, aka Deacon. So we're gonna say Shalom, peace and love, Kwam Yasha Allah, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.